Santos Escobar defending against Swerve. Now, Isaiah Serve, Swerve, Scott, excuse me, formerly known as Shane Strickland, also being a Lucha Underground. Uh, you know, these are two very, very exciting, very capable wrestlers. But where I haven't been fully indulged in the NXT brands, I have not really paid too much attention. What I have seen of Escobar and his little group, I love, absolutely love. Of course, people will know him as El Hijo, Del Fantasma, and of course, he, you know, he demasked and kind of, you know, almost, I, I don't think he spat in the face of tradition. It's uh, it's actually considered a great honor to take the mask off. It's supposed to be a real, like, if you look down, at, um, if you look back at uh, Mexican wrestling law, when you take your mask off, it's normally a ultimate sign of respect for you know not only the fans but also like kind of like a nod to your career so far um so you know there's loads of different conversations now what was fucking phenomenal first of all i have to mention escobar's entrance he looks fucking incredible he had the true old school uh dia de los metes um Apologies for my shocking pronunciation there, and <laughs> probably even spoke over. Uh, Dia de la Muertes, which is, of course, Day of the Dead. He had the mariachi kind of thing going on as well. Real nod to the traditions of Mexican law and Mexican wrestling. Great culture. Somebody who obviously really thrives on it. I love the idea that he's partners, uh, so to speak, who I think are Raul Mendoza and DJ Z, whatever his name was. Um, they have a different name for him, I'm sure. But yeah, these guys, you know, the way they're dressed, it's got a real cartel feel to it. A little bit of a mafiosa kind of, you know, la, la, la familia kind of thing going on. And their promos are great as well. I've seen some of their promos. So that all aside, the match itself was, for me, by far and away, match of the night. And that will probably upset people because they're going to insist on the main being match of the night. And there was no question that was a fantastic match too. But for me, this was this was fucking fantastic. Fantastic. The athleticism, the the sheer ferocity, the way they were striking each other, the physicality. It is wonderful and refreshing to see a cruiserweight star matchup, that athleticism, that flippy do shit as people like to call it, but it was done properly. You know, this wasn't just throwaway spots. It wasn't just like 25 super kicks, <clears throat> young bugs. You know, it was it it felt real. It was meaningful. Everything had impact. Everything was allowed to breathe a little bit as well. Swerve didn't just hit like 25 moves in a flurry and then, you know, Santos kicks out on one. No, it was like, hit a crazy high impact move. That, you know, that Frankensteiner off the top rope and throwing him into, you know, his lackeys and that. And it was just phenomenal. He even had a, you know, a guest appearance from MC Hammer at some point. Like, the whole thing just like worked really well. It was so well done. And it was very minimal as well. You didn't need a massive amount of crazy psychology here. You wanted to see two great combatants going at it. And there was that little extra storyline, of course. You know, someone he had a little bit of backup. You know, whoever that bloke was, come down to help him. No idea who he was. I'm told my, something Miles, TT Miles, whatever. Um, no idea. Um, looks good. I'm sure he's great. I haven't seen him wrestle personally. Um but the match itself was fucking fantastic, man. Like, this this really was um, my favourite match of the night and also one of my favourite matches of the year. It just stuck well with me. And the way I watched this pay-per-view was a, a very relaxed approach. Didn't really tweet much. Just wanted to sit back, take in, enjoy conversation with my friends as well. We were lucky to have, you know, Cam in the party at one point as well. He's just a fantastic lad and, you know, really good company. And... But this was the one match where I couldn't take my eyes off the screen. I was so focused on what was going on. And I've got, you know, the basketball on in the background because I'm a huge Miami Heat fan, as all my friends know. And I'm like, kind of got one eye on that, one eye on the screen. But the basketball took a real back seat here. And I was just staring at it. And I was just engrossed in everything they were doing. All the moves were such high impact. And the flamboyance and the colour and the chemistry between the two. I'd happily watch these guys wrestle each other all year long. I really hope they're going to revisit this and it's going to be a more long-term rivalry because if there's one criticism you probably could have of NXT is they do have a lot of one-and-done scenarios, particularly in the undercard. But do you know what? This helped really legitimise that Cruiserweight Championship. And right now, it feels like it's on a megastar. 
I genuinely think if he's booked properly and he's given enough time um, to develop as a character, I think Santos Escobar could be a huge fucking deal. Uh, very much in the same kind of mold of what they're doing with Angel Garza as well, who I know he's picked up an injury, but when he's on fire, he really is exciting. And I know that WWE officials are very high on Angel Garza. I'm hoping that Escobar's going to get the same treatment because the look, the way he carries himself, his promos, I think he's really got something special there. I couldn't agree more, man. This match made me think of, you know, WCW 1997. Not necessarily, you know, the Halloween Havoc match between Eddie and Ray, but just the Cruiserweights in general at that time. You know, they were never going to be up in that main event. That's why a, a whole bunch of them left before the company died. But you just knew when you were WCW and you were a Cruiserweight, there was that ceiling that you were never going to go over. And they knew that. And a lot of times they just went out and just had, the match of the night every night this was just this reminded me of you know like Rey Mysterio in 2000 uh, was it 2002 2003 when he was cruiserweight champion a lot during that time just having you know great match one after another and Escobar just he is he's not like Ray in the fact that he's a bit more muscular like he still does a lot of you know the flippy shit but he's also got a really big power game in there and it's him and Scott Styles just they're opposite, but opposite to track, and they just mesh together really, really well. And yeah, I could watch these guys wrestle for yeah the rest of the year. Give me, give me the rest of 2020. Well, three months of it because it's been a shit year so far, guys. Let's be honest with each other here. And this would be a very nice, bright spot to that. So let's get even if it's just you know it doesn't have to be on takeovers because you know those are very far and few between. So get them wrestling more on NXT even if they have to have like some tag matches with that guy that saved Scott that I don't remember the name of either. There's probably to be some sort of tag match for that. So let's just get them wrestling more and you know the people should enjoy that. Yeah, it's there's you know it's never a crime to have a more long term rivalry. I think if it's done properly, obviously it, it's kind of frustrating with WWE because if there's one thing you can really point to is the fact that their long term rivalries normally tend to be quite tedious, quite boring. Something that uh, has bucked the trend quite nicely actually. And Raw has been Drew McIntyre and Randy Orton for the most part, which has actually been quite. Uh, interesting and every single time you think oh this is where they're going to pull the trigger and they don't and you're a little bit surprised and it makes you wonder how far they can take it and that's quite good but it doesn't always hit the mark um, case in point Street Profits versus Entrade and Garza <laughs> it's just every week <laughs> just keep having the same thing you know and even then it's it's to do with the way it's presented you know it, it's a very minimalist fashion here one thing I really like about NXT that the main roster doesn't do well is that when they do have these big rivalries, you know, because Escobar versus Swerve is always going to be a world class match. You know, we know that from an athletic standpoint, it's going to be fantastic. One thing that NXT does so well is they don't give you the actual goods until it matters most. They don't just like they do have, you know, they are known for sometimes because obviously where takeover isn't like a monthly thing like it is for a lot of things, although it seems like they're definitely starting to lean that way a lot more in the COVID era. Um because they've got another pay-per-view coming up next month and they've been using like um They've been doing a kind of TNA impact kind of thing, haven't they, where they've been using the weekly show as a kind of pay-per-view format as well. They did this with like a sort of great American bash double. Um, but one thing that's really cool about it is the fact that, you know, when they've got these big matchups, they, they let you watch them and take over and just spunk them all on TV. You know, something that AEW is doing as well. And they're kind of falling in stamped WCW trap of like every week we've got to have a main event so we can win the ratings. Actually, sometimes it's better to have the slow burn because it is ultimately a marathon, not a sprint. 